Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show podcast. A quick reminder before we start of the first UK Everything Electric show of the year, taking place on the 28th, 29th and 30th of March at London's fabulous Excel. Uh, convention centre is amazing. It's got incredible public transport now. Just want to make that very clear, including the wonderful new Elizabeth Line. It's really easy to get to. It's, there will be an amazing array of exhibitors and every electric car you can poke a stick at will be either on display or available for test drives. So, you, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a must-see event. So if you're in the London area at all, at the just before Easter, do please come along and have a look. It's, it's going to be an amazing thing. But this episode, uh, this technology will be featured at the uh, Everything Electric show. This episode is about heating both at home and at work. But it is also a really good example of how new technology is literally years ahead of legislation but it was often introduced back in the old days, like a hundred years ago. And it really needs updating, as we will discover in this episode. This is particularly true when it comes to building regulations and the vice-like grip the gas industry still has when it comes to home heating in particular. But there are now available better, cleaner and longer term solutions that don't require us to burn heavily subsidised imported fossil gas that we're paying for. We pay for the subsidies through our tax and then we pay for the gas. Just want to make that really clear. As some regular viewers and listeners will know, I have uh, infrared heaters in my studio back in the UK and can verify now from a couple of years experience that they work really well. So we featured Herschel infrared heaters of various types on the Everything Electric channel a few times, but I wanted to catch up on what Herschel are doing now and how they're progressing and where they see the future of this really, really simple and obvious but really effective technology. So please welcome to the Fully Charged Show podcast from Herschel, Paul Morey and Matt Dodds. Like Everything Electric? Then you'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric expos around the world. Next up, we're in London and Harrogate. Remember, energy and transport professionals go free on the first day. So Matt and Paul, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I just want to say that uh, at the moment where I am, heating a home is really not an issue, but I, I remember what it's like. <laughs> so I have, I have two of your heaters in my, in my studio and they are, I've got three, what am I saying? Yeah, I've got three, I've just remembered. One in the office, two in the studio, and they are kind of game changing. They are really interesting, but I would love you to do the basics just as a reminder for people who haven't come across the material before, haven't seen your heating systems and also haven't seen the episode we did about, about Herschel. Can you just explain the kind of rudiments of why they work? Because it is weird, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's normal, it works, it's normal to us, yeah. it's weird to some people. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, the weird thing I think, Robert, is you're, you, we're used to heat rising, um, because yeah. we're used to heating. So when we do things like put a heater on the ceiling, that, that seems weird. Um, yeah. Yeah. The science isn't weird at all. So um, we're using radiant heat, which is um, otherwise called infrared. Um, and basically the heat from the heater itself um, is such a wave band that it travels through the air and it, um, it radiates out and warms up surfaces and people directly. So um we're doing the opposite to what convection does so it's a secondary um thing that the air heats with ours um so that that's yeah. that's yeah. the primary thing we're doing is is directly heating the building and the people in the building so so we can do both right. we can heat the building and the people um it's not that weird because a coal fire or any kind of radiant heat is is very natural um we're very used right. to the sun um and it's the same principle. So the sun travels, you know, it goes right through the atmosphere um, and it only warms up uh, the surfaces that it, um, that it, that it meets. That it touches, so, yeah. um, it's the, actually the oldest form of heating known to man. It's what cavemen used to use right. for heating, the fire, so yes. it's, it's very natural. And we've evolved for that form of heat, so, which is why, actually, we feel very comfortable around radiant heat. Um, everyone likes yes. to walk from the fire. Um, so we're just doing that electronically. Uh, in the form of various heaters. So we go from, for domestic purposes, the ones you have, 
which are yeah. mostly yeah. white. They don't need to be. They can be picture panels, etc. cetera. Um, but they tend to yeah. be flat panels uh, and emit a wave band called fine infrared. So that's the sort of comfortable wave band that's appropriate for heating people in a room um, without being too hot. So if you go hotter, um, when they start to glow, and we'll be used to uh, sort of outdoor heaters that um, actually physically glow, they're yeah. still infrared, but they're on the visible spectrum, so they're getting hotter, um, and they start to glow, right. and it's more intense, put it that way. So you wouldn't yeah. necessarily want that in your house. It would be, no. be too hot. No. So, um, but for a lot of the stuff that Matt does on the commercial side, um, then that's the most appropriate form of heating. So when we're into big spaces, um, we do do heaters that actually glow because they, they travel further, they're more intense. Um, right. And for outdoors as well, you, you, you know, the fire infrared just wouldn't be as effective at all. So, yeah. so we have to match the right kind of wave band for the, for the, for the purpose. But um, right. yeah, it's, it's all electric heating. Um, yeah. And we're yeah. just using that electricity. So that one kilowatt of electricity in a different way to using that one kilowatt to heat a volume of air, which rises to the yeah. ceiling and then yeah. circulates around. So, yeah. So Matt, I mean, the so, one thing I didn't know about was the big was was you know, i.e., industrial exterior heaters. I hadn't seen that at your showroom. So are, are these? I mean, heaters that glow that you see the heat. I have. Okay, I don't yeah. think I've. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, it's it, the key is that selection of what you're putting into different buildings and different environments. So as Paul was saying, right. those higher bay warehouse spaces where it's a particularly cold environment where you're needing a higher level of intensity. Uh, they created from a higher height to give you the comfort levels lower down. That's the key thing right. we're looking at. So it's making the right selection. That might be a combination of different heater types. So lots of industrial environments where you've got office space, you may be putting in ceiling grid heaters, but in the main workshop areas, you're looking more precisely about where people are spending time and needing to be heated and then selecting the correct right. heater type for where they are. And I mean, is there, from my experience of using them, there is a uh, economic advantage. I mean, i.e., they don't cost a lot to run. Once they're going, they don't seem to be. I'm just trying to think of sort of other electric heaters we've had, which are like heat, uh, like oil radiators that you can have on wheels. We've got one of those from yeah. years ago. Uh, that seems to use a lot more power to heat up. It, it, we can't. We can't trick. So uh, one kilo of electric kind of turns. It's into just one, one kilowatt. kilowatt. Yeah. It is what you're doing with it. So if we put that into an oil field radiator, that the ones on wheels tend to be about two kilowatts, which is quite a right. lot of energy actually. Um, and you're warming the oil in the in the heater, which is then gradually emitting it through the sort of fins it's got. Um, yeah. And it's designed to gently heat the air. But the trouble is, warm air rises, as I said at the start, and yeah. it, it goes to the ceiling. And you don't really want to be warm on the ceiling. You want to be warm where you're sat. Um, yeah. So that's that's why. It, it's using the same energy, but it's, it's, you're putting the heat in the wrong place. If we were to take a, I think your heater would be probably less than one kilowatt. And because yeah. it's on the wall and it's in your study and it's directed straight at you, you're getting the benefit from that one kilowatt directly. So, yeah. um, and you're, you're, not, you're not shoving it on the ceiling. So that's the yeah. kind of main efficiency gain. Um, and most people now put them on the ceiling and, and it radiates down. They're yeah. quite effective at yeah. But it's counterintuitive because yeah. why would you have a heater on the ceiling? But um, you imagine in a, in a room, yes. that's in the yes. center of the room, and it radiates down onto you and into the furniture and into the walls and carpet. Everything absorbs that heat and it gradually warms up and then radiates back as well. So right. you create a warm environment, that's the point. Um, in a similar way to fires, that's what we used to do. Mm. We used to have the fire on. It would yeah. gently warm the room and then the room stays warmer. Um, and yeah. you're not worried about yeah. the temperature. <clears throat> we, we were never fussed about temperature until central heating came along. So. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Commercial and church type spaces, Robert, that so I'm dealing with on a day to day basis. So there's a lot of shift across from gas and oil based heating systems to electric and how right. to do that most successfully and looking at radiant um, in lots of different examples. But the first question we're asking, because they've been used to heating whole volumes of air in spaces, is whether they actually need to be doing the same again, because yeah, there's a great efficiency in just picking off the areas that people need to use to heat them in. And that will go with church environments as well, as well where you might have few areas where you want to focus heat. And then larger warehouse spaces where lots, big swathes of that area won't need to be heated. So you're getting yeah, yeah. additional efficiency there, as well as being able to heat people directly and not trying to heat a whole volume of air. 
And I mean, the, the thing that um, I'm supremely aware of here and in, the, in, um, in Australia, but also in the UK, is the, the connections that are happening between things like solar heating in this country, air conditioning, but in the UK heating. And I mean, is that yeah. something you're you're developing? Is that sort of that relationship between the, the solar generation yeah, and the heat? Really. I mean, we all know electric's not cheap. So if we're comparing to gas, we're looking at three or four times the unit price. It's artificial, as we know, but that's where it is. Yeah. Um, and if that changes, um, it means we can't be wasteful like we were with gas. I think there was a sort of a nice era, wasn't there, from the 50s onwards where we just burnt it and it was, it was free, yeah. well, not free. Yeah plentiful and we didn't care so we would heat the yeah. entire volume with a, a church and stuff so um but when, when we're into electric that that grid cost we've got to maximize the use of it um yeah but i think is to come on to your point how this integrates with renewables and the um the whole way the grid's going to work and self-generation in the future is really key and we're, this is something that we're really really keen on and working um very closely, including with um, the government on, because um, right. tying up that whole thing is, is is the key which we need to unlock. Now, with yeah. our heaters and radiant heating, they're actually very good for um, uh, being able to um, prime thermal masses. So by that, we mean you can heat the building itself when you've got right. the energy. So if you're running on solar and it's a sunny day, um, Ideal in Australia when it's cold, <laughs> um, <Yes. laughs> you'll get free heating, right? Um, right. And we can join the heaters. We can say, okay, turn that heater on in the living room, in the kitchen, because I've got three kilowatts spare. Um, right. Once that battery's topped up, but I think as well, um, tapping into these sort of DSR, if, if that means anything to you, the the demand side um, uh, grid. So yeah. when there's excess capacity coming down the down the tube, you know, so they'll, you'll get paid for for heating a house. Free. Yes. Yeah. Um, overnight well turn the heaters on in you, know, you might not want them in the bedroom but certainly in the living areas um yeah. and your house depending on the insulation level will start to retain that warmth um yeah so it's very different to the operation of say a heat pump which is needs to be on 24 7 to yeah. be effective yeah. we're kind of doing the opposite we're saying we can spot heat zone heat you can heat rooms that you only need heating when they're occupied people are working from home a lot more now if they're in the study why would you heat the whole house you just heat the room you're in yeah um, and you can do that very effectively and very cheaply. And if you've got solar, it's just a, it's just free heating. Um, yeah. So, but the trick is being able to put all that together in a smart system that says, okay, what do I want to prioritize? Do I want to do my hot water first? We don't do infrared heating for hot water. It doesn't exist. Right. But that's one thing you're going to need all year round. So priority one could be to make sure your hot water tank, your mixer G or whatever else you're using is, um, is topped up. And then you'll say, okay, and then I want the other heaters coming on. I want to top on my battery and you should be able to run your heating more or less free if you've got the right capacity. And we've yeah. certainly got yeah. examples of customers who have installed solar battery and our infrared heaters and are pretty much expecting to have no bills. Um, wow. And yeah. they're also yeah. tying into the overnight tariffs. That's that's what they're doing. So um, and quite often, I think, topping up the batteries from the cheap overnight electric um, as well as the car. So um, right. it's perfectly achievable. It needs some thought and we're doing a yeah. lot of work to try yeah. and make that automated and happen um, without consumers having to think too much about it. I think we just need to get to a stage where the heating kind of does its own thing and you're just nice and comfortable and the system has yeah. minimized the cost for you. That's, that's, the, that's the, the goal. And we're not too far off it. We're, we're getting it pretty close now. So. Yeah, because I mean, and that I mean, I think the thing that I want to say that makes such a difference is, for instance, in the uh, where I've got the your heaters, is a new build part of an old house, where, where the absolute focus when we built it, which is about eighteen years ago, was insulation. So it, it is insulated to the max. You know, it's got it's got triple gazed windows, quite small windows. It's really thick uh, thermal block walls. Uh, you know, a massive amount of insulation in the roof. And it, that makes such a big difference. And that's the real, I think, the struggle we have in the UK is with our older housing stock right. is that that yeah. isn't, again, I know, the original house that we moved into was basically a tent with flaps open. I mean, it was so not insulated. It was, and we've done huge amount of work to, to improve that. But it was, it was built in the 1950s, just up, well, late 1940s. And clearly insulation just wasn't, People just didn't even know what that meant when that was built. It's just, 
Is that, uh, so that did does, yeah. did they? That's the thing. So, um, yeah, I think we've, we've. This is really interesting in the whole debate about um, insulation, and you know, so we've got to be realistic on in terms of the housing stock, certainly in the UK, how yeah. much is feasible to be insulated, and therefore. Yeah. We know it's well known that heat pumps won't work very well in uninsulated spaces. Yeah. We're obviously going to use a lot more energy ourselves if we're trying to heat an uninsulated building. However, yeah. you can get clever with it because we're finding a lot of customers are actually um, using them as personal heaters, if that makes sense. So if you're that right. way in mind, you can actually put one of those panels above you and you can sit there and watch TV all day and just have that heater right. on, heating yourself, regardless yes. of the size of the room. Else. You don't need to worry about <laughs> who cares about the other side of the room if it's cold over there yeah. it actually doesn't yeah. matter um yeah. so i think we need to be a bit clever in terms of the older properties the leaky um larger properties that you know there's yeah. lots of people yeah. who might have a five bedroom house and just live on their own you know um yes yeah we, we yeah. have to think differently why would you heat all of those rooms in the house traditionally yeah. we've done it because yeah. we had a central system and it just fired up and yeah. everything yeah. was warm but um we've got yeah. a lot of people who say okay, i'll just heat myself in the living room or in the study or where I am and, and, and not worry about yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the rest of the house. Obviously, we want to keep it sort of background heat. We don't want it to go all um, damp and moldy and stuff, but that's another yeah. benefit of it. Yeah. It drives out the damp and mold because it actually warms the, yes. the wall itself. The so if you have got, yeah. that's it, yeah. So it does drive out a lot of the damp issues, which is a big problem as well. Right. So yeah. it, it is a, it's a shift in mindset in the way people have been used to heating spaces uh, yeah. and yeah. homes in their entirety and making sure we're being much clever as paul said about the zoning of where we yeah. need to heat yeah. certain spaces at certain times and again the legislation and the sap software which is obviously changing uh, with the future home standard and home energy model but that yeah. needs to be yeah. more reflective of the way people should be using electric heating like ours in different rooms at different times, not assuming yeah. that, that all yeah. these big you know, amounts of space are used at the same temperature for the same period of time. And, yeah. and that, that needs yeah. to be shifted. And that's certainly something we're working on to try and get that changed. But then it's also <laughs> interesting, Matt, that, that uh, I mean, generally speaking, in my knowledge of large warehouse building <laughs> regulations is limited, but I'm assuming they're not as heavily insulated as a domestic property. So therefore, if you can put heating in, or, or are they? Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, but I'm assuming yeah, they're like a big open space. It's going to be harder. Yeah, the more modern ones are built to better standards of insulation where you've right. got challenges, where you've got, you know, loading doors or vehicles yeah. being yeah. loaded and, and where people have had significant sized um, heating systems to heat actually smaller spaces within those areas. So we can right. zone those much more precisely and, and get, get much yeah, smarter about what heaters are on at what time and link that yeah. to their shift patterns or how they're operating those spaces. We, and we I mean, just I just, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, say again, Paul. Sorry, Robert, I cut in. Um, I said <laughs> okay. the trick is just to hit the people where they are. So yes. uh, we completed a factory in Belgium, actually. It's, a, it's an insulation factory, funny enough. Um, but um, I'm not sure how well the building's insulated, but um, they've <laughs> taken all, all, all these corporates coming off gas. I mean, that's all part of their right. CSR. Um, so they're ripping out these big old... Um, you, they, they're actually radiant gas systems, a lot mm. of them, but they used a huge amount of energy and they were always right. used to heat the entire space, okay? Yeah. Um, and if you try and do that with electric and it's so much more expensive, even compensating with solar, et cetera, it's just going to cost a fortune. So there is yeah. no option other than to say, if we're going to use electric heating, we have to do it in a, a more precise way. And we've zoned it so it's above the workers, basically. Uh, right. There's PI right. sensors and things, so yeah. they only trigger when when someone's there and we're measuring air temperature and the radiant temperature as well. So um, right. Right. we're being quite precise with the use of it to make sure that we're not wasting energy. Um, and they wanted to monitor consumption on that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. That's the key thing is that, you know, with the controls we're putting in, you're able to actually log what they're using in different zones and seeing you know, how, what that impact is on cost and trying to manage that in a better way on, on local yeah. consumption. Yeah. So that's, that's a key part of it as well. So that's interesting though. That, 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 Oh, sorry, I was just going to say that the, uh, the, the, the move then within industry on a, you know, and we're talking on a big scale here is away from using gas. And that's, and that's yep. kind of, it feels, feels like that's across the board, which is, which kind of opens up the, <laughs> opens up the market in a big way, doesn't that's, it? I mean, that is quite an interesting. I mean, you've got every corporate saying they need to hit their own objectives, you know. Right. Um, right. Uh, I mean, 
we're working quite closely with the Church of England. That's not corporate, but their their target's 2030. But that's 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 across the corporate board as well. Most people have those yeah. objectives to, um, and it's coming quickly. You know, we're we're hurtling towards these deadlines. Yeah. Um, yeah. And people are starting to be serious now. Say, hey, we are coming off gas, right? That's that's a given. Right. Um, right. Uh, and so they're very much looking into the renewable side. So how much PV can I get on the building? Um, yeah. How much of that is usable? Um, and you know, w- with a big PV array, you- you'd be surprised how much heating we can actually generate, even during oh, the winter. Yeah. Oh god, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, but there is no choice. But I said we, we cannot just replace what's there, like for like, mm. and-, and try and hit yeah. the entire volume. Yeah. It would, well, the grid wouldn't be able to cope. Nor would the, you know, it's, it's just not feasible in terms yeah. of um, yeah. cost. So yeah. Yeah. Um, but and it's not necessary. We don't need to. Why would you heat yes. space not use yes. a storeroom or yeah. something? No problem. Yeah. So. <laughs> and one of the things I've thought while we're talking, because I can sort of, I totally get churches, warehouses, factories, big manufacturing plants, but I've just suddenly thought of sort of office blocks. I mean, if you've done sort of, I don't even know, you know, like a modern glass tower in a city. I don't know how yeah. they would have been heated. I've been in them and I've been warm. So I know they're heated. I just don't know how that works. But can you, rec- presumably that's a, ga- is that a gas system that would have been built in when it was constructed? I don't know. How, do, often, how do they operate? Yeah, quite often they're, they're gas boilers in some of those older commercial properties. I think, yeah, even some of the more modern ones, that's what's been going in. But there has been a shift away. Certainly we've gone in with our, let's talk about our ceiling grid heaters, which drop into a, traditional office ceiling grid as, yeah. a, as a great solution. Yeah. Um, so we've used those quite extensively across those spaces. Uh, also entrance areas and reception uh, where it, it gets more difficult to heat uh, people and, and finding solutions there as well. So um, right. yeah, tra- traditionally it's been quite a few gas boiler or oil boiler systems for those, those larger commercial buildings. But that's a right. shift away and it, it definitely being driven by big corporates and you know, the come back on the warehouse spacing, but it, they're investigating the solar, as Paul was saying, and whatever they can get on those roofs and then looking at uh, electric form of, of heating to, to go alongside that. Yeah. But then, I mean, that was what blew me away when I first saw your 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 array of heaters was that they don't they often don't look like heaters. I mean, I didn't. I went in a room. There were some mirrors and some pictures, and, and I went, "Oh, that's, I know it's pathetic, but I'm very I'm very simple mind." But you know, I go, "Oh, that is a heat. Oh, well, that's clever." But presumably, that could lend itself to a sort of corporate. I'm just thinking, you could have a big sign behind the the entrance Absolutely. desk, which is actually yeah. actually a heater. Yeah. Yeah, corporate logos yeah. on our picture panels behind reception desks. We've done a number of those. Uh, oh, right. And yeah, that works, that works really well. We, we tend to yeah. use, yeah. for these big office blocks in London and things, it tends to be reception areas and places yeah. where they're actually, right. the receptionists are cold, so we can we can localise yeah. the heating for them. Yeah. Um, they, I mean, most of them have got such big built-in systems that are already there, we wouldn't, yeah. um, it right. wouldn't be worth replacing right. them. But, so I guess... More for offices. Our target market is is the smallest type of spaces Such where spaces, yeah. um, right, right. The, the the big ones will have a lot of infrastructure and it's it's all air conditioned and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah. that's one thing we can't do. We can't turn them into. We haven't invented that yet to um, turn them into no. coolers as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what you yes, want? So- <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming back to your property, Robert, just thinking about you're talking about insulating the space where you've got our heaters, but actually, yeah. so. Yeah. That, what we're seeing is you know, lots of our customers doing that and actually the requirement for wattage and what they need to put in in terms of heating is pretty low so right, right, know, right that, that's right. where they are saying look i want to consider herschel heaters alongside solar and battery because yeah for the yeah, probably slightly under the cost of larger systems like heat pumps they can get all of that equipment um, and yeah. it's yeah. less dis- disruption for what they're putting in yeah. so the, yeah. cap- the, the capital differentialing you know and that, and that capex cost widens between those bigger central plant systems and our heating yeah. systems when yeah. you're needing less watches to be, be put into the buildings yeah. yeah and i mean the other thing that was very obvious from experience was ha- the ease of installing them you know I, yeah. you know if you were and if you were sort of stripping out a house and doing it again 
the, the, it, one of the easiest things you'll install is a Herschel heater because it's literally you screw it to the wall and you plug it in and you switch it on. I mean, it was that I was amazed by that, you know, because normally a heating uh, okay. thing is complicated and disruptive. Uh, but that's yeah, very. We, we literally sell one that you can um, you, you can hang on the wall or even on feet if you wanted. But um, like you say, plug it in and away you go. You, you've got app control. Yeah. Um, you've got yourself a heating system, so it can go from DIY to a proper install. Um, yeah, yeah. And even the proper install, you know, it's only an electrician's job. Um, yeah, yeah. Get to running yeah. a lighting circuit, it's it's dead easy. So, um, yeah. and this is another thing. It's like we're talking about electrifying and decarbonizing heating, not just in the UK but globally, and all this skill shortage that's going to be required. Um, yeah. And we've got these yeah. really straightforward systems. We go, all the Sparkies can do this. They they know how to do yeah. it. It's, um, yeah. it's simple. It's their, It's what they do. Um, yeah. There is no skill yeah. shortage yeah. there. Uh, and it's quick, you know, right. you've got your product system in within a day or two, done. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, it's kind of getting that message across to people that there is an alternative to um, to this, trying to replicate, I guess, what we've been used to by swapping a gas boiler for an electric version of that, which is called a heat pump, yeah. Yeah. Um, and running yeah. it centrally. And not that there's anything wrong with them, you know, they're, um, they are inherently efficient, but we can gain efficiencies by using that head dif differently and saying let's yeah. not heat the entire yeah. building all the time let's you let's apply that heat when it's needed when people are there so if you've gone out for yeah. the evening yeah. why would you want the house heated you know it can it can yeah. switch down yeah. um we do need the legislation then, to catch it yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. saying in oh, terms right. of the way uh, that that's not there at the moment and this is what we're working quite hard on but you know, consumers are coming to us saying Look, when we're modeling this under the current software for SAP, which ultimately produces PCs, that we are being forced down a line of only a, a few technologies. And right. why is it not right. more open for alternative technologies like infrared to be recognized right. and included with benefit? So that that's missing at the moment. And uh, yeah, there's yeah. consultations yeah. underway, but that needs to change to catch up with um, both what technologies like ours can do and also offering consumer choice because it's it's lacking at the moment. Right. I mean, right. can you quickly explain what SAP is? S is presumably SAP. Yeah. I, I think so I, it, I've it's been to an assessment done for your property. Um, yeah, there'll be a, a long, a full SAP assessment made or a um, reduced data SAP for certain properties as well domestically, where it's assessing. Um, the overall rating for the property based on the insulation standards, the heating system that's in there, any benefit right. of solar or battery that you've got included as well, and we'll come up with an overall rating and score. So right. um, very simply, but it, it's it's very specific about the way different properties are, but within that, right. it's the way direct electric heating is viewed against gas right. and, and fossil right. fuel heating. And there'll be a part of the calculation about how that's generated and transmits across the network to get to your property. So that will impact on it in some way. Um, but there will be certain technologies that get benefit, heat pumps, for example, with their coefficient of performance. Um, and all other direct, other than a couple of examples of storage heaters and direct um, heat, yeah, high heat retention heaters may get certain benefit. But those technologies, certainly from a heating perspective, um, yeah, we, we need to be looking at getting us recognised and the benefits that we're offering. Right. Right. So right. at the moment, and this, this is as, as we <laughs> sit today, you won't believe this, but your EPC, you've heard of these um, energy performance certificates. You have to have them if you're moving yes. house. And, yes. Yes. Um, no, I've heard of yeah. the EPC. It was the SAP. Yeah. I wasn't. Uh, uh, was it's it, yeah. the thing that, that leads to yeah. that. So yeah. that's the sort of back end process that, if you're right. doing a, a new build or a, a, a remodeling, that kind of stuff. But in, right. in your basic right. EPC, uh, you will still find that they uh, will recommend a gas boiler if you had electric heating. Now, wow. I can't believe wow. we're still you know, in 2024 <laughs> yeah. and yeah. the assessor guy is going to come along and say, you can improve your EPC by taking out electric heating and putting a gas boiler in. I mean, really? Wow. wow. And even wow. above a heat pump, actually. I think yeah. it even it uh, yeah. prioritizes gas now. And the reason is it doesn't mean energy performance. It means cost. Cost. Yeah. And it's, that's just because the gas price is artificially low or the electricity right. price is right. artificially high, whichever way you look at it. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so we're in this funny state with, um, with legislation at the moment where um, the, the overall drive, and we're saying, you know, we're banning gas boilers and all this kind of stuff. And, yeah, um, yeah. And, and, you know, in the car industry, <laughs> it's easy. 
it makes no sense at all. Tax benefits for it. You don't yeah. pay road tax. You don't no. pay company car tax yeah. in the same scale. Yeah. Um, really easy. The government has sent a very clear signal to the car industry saying, and mandated it as well, saying, you know, yeah. you must do this. When it comes to heating, which is as, as big a problem in terms of um, climate change and, and the CO2 yeah. emissions, um, it's still going down the gas route. And it's, um, uh, it's just bizarre. Just and yeah. So they've got the intent is correct. You know, the long-term goals are there. But when it comes to right. the actual delivery of that, the legislation hasn't caught up at all. And things like infrared heating and these new alternative technologies are just not getting any no, kind of help no, at all. No recognition. So, um, right. We were just talking to Desnes on that um, only yesterday. But So we are working to try and change that, but it's a very slow-moving machine. Um, yeah. And uh, the... the, the the problem is all this SAP stuff that, that Matt was referring to, it's very complicated and it's all rooted in sort of central heating systems and yeah. uh, you're always assessed to this sort of standard old fashioned heating pattern of something like seven till nine, nine in the morning. Nine, and yeah. Four thirty to ten in the evening. Yeah, yeah. You know, and people right, don't right. Feel, you know, that's assuming the whole house is heated, uh yes. twenty one degrees kind of thing. And you know, that's not that's not how it, it should be going forward. But this is we're in 2024, we've got modern technology that allows you to do yeah. amazing things now, and it's just not caught up. So, but, but that software um, will dictate for certain people you know, with you know getting mortgages out that the, the mortgage lender will say, "We want to make sure you, you you've got a property with an EPC of C or above," or yeah, all of those types of factors. Yeah. It has it all filters back into that software and the way that's approached. So, right. it's a very important part with the future home standard coming out um, that we are you know giving our responses to the consultation and, and getting a more level playing field for other technologies, which isn't there at the moment. We've got all the, yeah. all the house builders, without exception, I think, Matt, uh, want this technology. Yeah. Right. Wow. So developers say, we want to build a house now and deliver um, something that's sustainable for our customers going forward. So we want yeah. to be able to give them solar, battery storage, a well-insulated house, you know, build it not to passive house standard, which is really quite precise, but... Um, yeah. Uh, certainly to a very good when insulated standard and when you do that the heating load is is low very anyway low. yeah and yeah. that whole then debate about the heat pump thing kind of says well there's no need to have a really efficient heating system because you're not using much um yeah uh, you you've you've made the building as as um for all intents and purposes you know um its heat losses are very low so it doesn't yeah. require some complex system with underfloor heating and plumbing and wet system yeah. and all that kind of stuff in a big fan outside your house all that um, which is also but, expensive um, isn't it i mean it's, it costs a lot of money to eat you, when you're building you, it it's the practicality of where do you put the the units you know um yeah. uh, the space you know but we haven't got massive gardens anymore in these new developments so where, where does it go there's a noise issue um there's an ongoing maintenance, maintenance issue maintenance well. every year, that, that's yeah. the concern yeah. for lots of these landlord developers and who who retains that and what the ongoing maintenance costs and responsibility is right so with yeah. ours there's no maintenance so they can go okay um they last a long time they're solid right. state so there's nothing to um and there's no central point of failure you know if one panel went right you haven't lost your whole heating so yeah. so they they would much rather deliver to a customer saying we've kind of future proofed you you've got uh soda battery an efficient infrared heating system you're gonna be nice and comfortable um and as matt said there's no maintenance issues they're not worried about skills and you know get, getting these things installed um commissioning uh i mean it's just it's just a real headache for them um right yet this uh legislation that this the um this sap and all the rest of it, it just doesn't facilitate that so so they're yeah. really knocking on the door saying come on guys you need to um you need to do something to get Get in there but they would choose not everyone but you know bigger houses heat pumps could be very practical but for yeah. smaller developments apartments all that kind of stuff there's a there's a really big um, incentive to just go let's let's put something simple in that's um that's easy to use and run that's and install yeah and that, it's getting also, looked at it's being considered but it's right okay the, the speed at which we're going to get to <laughs> a position where it's recognized that's yeah that's the concern yeah I mean, it's also interesting that because it, it kind of goes w wider than just the area we're discussing now. But in the, 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 the technology has overtaken legislation to such an extent that it, and, and, and also our traditional ways of thinking. I mean, electric cars are a great example that people who've never driven them 
only can only think of range and charging them when you're driving. Once you've got a car, you go, well, I haven't used the car I've got now for 27 hours. That's probably enough time to charge it. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, yeah. The, that it's a completely different mindset that's very hard to communicate when you've never experienced it. And what you're saying is this is a technology that didn't exist, really. I mean, I know the fundamentals of it ex have existed forever, but yeah. it, it's completely at odds with the way we've behaved for the last hundred years. And therefore, it's, the legislation is 100 years old and it doesn't, it's, it's out of date. Electric cars, I mean, it, I think you talk to anyone who's had one and they will never go back, myself included. Yeah, um, so, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and that's difficult to explain to people because they say, well, why? Because you're worried about range and all this kind of stuff. You go, well, no, yeah. you don't really worry about that too much. You just build it into your journey. You know, you stop for a coffee. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. um, hopefully the charging infrastructure will get better. Um, and once yeah. it does, yeah. there isn't a problem at all. But um, in terms of the technology, yeah, I, don't, I haven't met anyone who says, I'm going to go back to a combustion engine. Um, no. And it's a similar no. thing with our heaters. So once people go with the infrared system, the magic yeah. is they yeah. say, I don't want to go back because that's better. Yeah. And yeah. it's a, yeah. you know, it's a kind yeah. of, you can't uh, know that until you've experienced it, but they prefer the feeling that heat is, feels more natural. It's not stuffy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fact is we can be just as warm at a lower air temperature, which people prefer. So yeah. I think, um, yeah. uh, and I, it is that same analogy. We, we need to move forward. And I think it's really quite encouraging to say we can go green and that green technology can actually be more fun or better or more enjoyable than, um, than, than what we had before. And we, yeah. we, we, yeah. we often lose sight of that, I think, when we're looking at this whole big um, picture because it's it, it sort of, makes us think we've got to not do things and um, yeah. live our lives yeah. differently and stuff. And I don't, yeah, I don't think we do. I think we just need to drive the technology forward that enables that yeah. to happen. So yeah. And yeah. on the heating side, um, taking it into the kind of commercial space, and we, we're running an episode with you on the, on the churches at the moment, um, that's yeah. Yeah. fundamentally changing the way churches are heated. And it's... Um, right. I can't, it's hard to describe how it, how important that is because they're moving. They have to move off fossil fuels, and they've all yeah. got oil yeah. and gas boilers, um, and they're running those for hours and hours on end because all that warm air from the radiator—it's not really a radiator, goes up, it's a, goes up to a very very <laughs> high ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> Put the congregation on the ceiling; yeah. they'd be delighted, but they're not. They're down on the floor. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, when. Uh, the, the, it was an architect actually came along and said, you know, I've got this idea, can we combine a, a, a light chandelier type um, lighting yeah. with, a, with yeah. a heater? Um, uh, and we thought that was very interesting and sort of made one and he was delighted. So that's where it all started right. only right. two years ago. So, right. Um, right. but it, it's, it's totally logical because they've all got lighting hanging down on yeah. pendants in, yeah. in churches. You just say, well, just replace that with, um, with a heater. And it's yeah. right above yeah. where people um, are, are going to be, yeah. right? So, um, yeah. but and so you're delivering the heat, and you've got to think. A lot of these places aren't used very often. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first church we did, they went from preheating. I think was what 12, 13 12, hours. Hours. They used to turn yeah, the heating on for the Sunday service at one in the wow. morning or something. Um, and just a, to a get huge energy to, use as well. Yeah. Energy, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and our heaters need to come on for in that in that church for about half an hour before, yep. and then during the service right. they actually turn them yeah. down because it gets to a night. It creates kind of a bubble of warmth in the of, yeah. in, within the zone yeah. of the heaters. So, but if it's not fully occupied and it's only at, you know Christmas and things that they're they're full, then they only need to heat a certain area of the church where the congregation. Yeah. Are. Um, yeah. And so yeah. it, it's got yeah. significant savings, but it's the fact you're using using it differently. I think yeah. they were absolutely yeah. shocked to say we've come off gas and we've actually saved, I think it was 90% of the energy use in terms of kilowatts, but actually 50% on, um, on the actual bill itself. So yeah. they've moved yeah. to a system yeah. where they've actually saved money um, yeah. and hit their yeah. goal of um, decarbonizing the heating. So and the next phase with that one is uh, to put a big solar array on. Now all, face, all churches face east, or most of them do, which gives them a very large south-facing roof, which is quite handy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just as an aside, I've been sort of thinking, oh, hang on, they they could all have charge points as well, couldn't they, in the car parks? Because, yes. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, all these villages and places yeah. with, yeah, yeah. with yeah. car parks during the week, 
what a great thing for us EV drivers. We can um, we can hook up and uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah but, we can visit uh, churches all over the country. Yeah. It, it doesn't take too much to start thinking that can be a carbon negative church, and it can actually be doing some good yes. for the community. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, whether you're religious or not, it's it's there to you know uh, to help people. Yeah. So yeah. But also, I think a thing we haven't mentioned, which I think is important, is that you're manufacturing the, all this equipment in the UK, aren't you? So that's a, a, a very yeah. big plus. Yeah, and, and it's, I think, really important to us to make sure that, because we often ignore, I think, that the, um, it kind of comes up in the car industry more, but in terms of the embedded yeah. carbon, yeah. And the carbon footprint of actually making the things now, it's not really come through in, in the heating industry yet, but um, it will do at some point. And uh, no one's done a proper study to say, OK, if, if a heat pump's a bit more efficient over its lifetime, but what's it take to make it, you know, in terms yeah. of yeah. Um, the cost of the planet in, in, in getting there in the first place? So I think that will come. So it was very important to us to say, can we make, um, can we totally, we, set, we, we made a brand new, heater um, last year when we set the factory up and we our absolute right. goal was right. we want to make it as sustainable as possible so it needs to be from local materials so we use British steel if they're still going um, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you, <laughs> the, the insulation material comes from uh, from Wales and we're in Bristol so it's it's just around the corner right, right. Um, and uh, the, the heating element actually comes from Germany because we don't have the uh, ability to do it in the uk at the moment but right. we're not we're right. not traveling far and the no. point is that no. heater can be fully recycled because it's it's mostly metal so um, right right uh, and it so it, it should never need to be thrown away it's the same with the church heater so the the um the halo that we make same thing yeah. it all comes from it's all base um steel or aluminium yeah uh, that we can yeah. bend fold and um, turn into these amazing heaters um, right. But we've made them purposely that they can always be repaired. So if an element went, you know, there's, a, there's always a bit of lifespan of, of something in there, and it's, usually, it's going to be the heating yeah. element. You yeah. can just change it like a light bulb. Um, right. That, right. So uh, it, it never needs to be thrown away. And we've made sure all the wiring and stuff, it's, you know, it's going to last um, forever. So on the church side of things, we're saying this church has been here sometimes hundreds of years. We want yeah. the heater to be there yeah. hundreds of years. It needs to look like it's been there for hundreds of years as well. Yeah. Um, and if yeah. we've done our job right, people don't notice them. They should walk in and just go, yeah. oh, I'm, yeah. I'm being heated, how? <laughs> and yes. people still yeah. struggle with it coming from, you know, above. It was okay. From above, um, yeah. 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 So, so, yeah, the factory's in Bristol, um, and we, we're really pleased. Um, our biggest market at the moment outside of the UK um, is, is USA. Why? Um, this oh, good. Is, right. yeah, and we're selling to Australia. So um, the New Zealand, right. we've... Um, we sell quite good units down there, so yeah. It, uh, I think we exported to fifty-four countries. Um, over wow, the past, that uh, is amazing! Wow. Yeah, and we, we have an operation in Benelux stuff. We're a UK company, um, right? And, and you know, doing what UK PLC should be doing uh, is yeah. investing. You know, and it's um, it's great. We we like doing it. You know, it, it feels yeah. nice. We're we're not we're delivering products that people like that are doing. You know, they're running on. Um, electricity, which the, hopefully everyone plugs into a renewable source, that gets yeah. gets us off. Um, uh, we tell every customer that make sure you plug into a renewable tariff. That's the quickest and easiest yeah. thing you can do to drive the back end change, um, yeah. uh, and and be nice and warm and, and and efficient along the way. So yeah, it's good. And yeah. there's huge interest that, that from customers, both commercially, churches, and domestically, about the fact we're making heaters here. And right, uh, right. Yeah, people are wanting to visit the showroom, but also see the manufacturing facility and are yeah. really enjoying seeing the process. And I think I've probably mm -hmm. underestimated how much people <laughs> wanted to do that, really. Um, yeah. But that's a really important part for them in their decision and, and, yeah. and why they're going for us. Well, you were here well, two just, years it, ago. It, yeah. Yes. And the factory is literally on the same... Um, right, on the same site, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've, we've but I mean, it's just because yes, <laughs> but it's just become the norm, hasn't it? It has become the norm that you sort of, you know, even I've got a hat that I was given here, you know, like a, a sort of hat with a little sign up, and of course it's made in China, and every we're yeah. sort of used to everything, everything we have, my shoes, my coat, you know, cars, everything is made in China, and it's kind of become the norm, which is you know has benefits and and downsides as we we're all extremely aware, but I mean what. 
I know that I was born in a country that was a manufacturing hub, the UK, and, and it isn't anymore, and it really should be. And we have those skills, and that's always been something I've been passionate about, that, that you know, that we should be okay. making things, but, but not steam trains. We did steam trains, and they were brilliant, but I think we can move on and make something that's... It's <laughs> that's, a nice, uh, nice working environment. It, we're, we're recruiting, I think we've, we've um, taken on even more people today, and, um, you know... That oh, great. And... It's just nice. It's a joy to walk in there and see local people being employed, yeah. making yeah. Uh, and, and enjoying what they're doing. You know, it's a nice. Yeah. It's a nice. Yeah. Um, it's not a sweatshop. It's it, you know, it's a it's right. a nice modern facility. Yeah. Um, but they like doing that because they know they're doing some good. You know, they 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 yeah. know the products they're making yeah. that are not um, causing damage to the planet and stuff. They're going to actually uh, help on this transition. So um, yeah. so it's nice to be able to combine business and. Um, and do the right thing as well. It's that's yeah. what, what more yeah. you want, really. So, yeah. No, that is fantastic. No, it really is amazing. No, I, th I, I mean, I'm really impressed with what you're doing. And I mean, I, I haven't even caught up with where you're going next. I mean, what, what do you, can you just give us a sort of clue of, you know, are there next steps for you? What do you see as the sort of the, 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 your next goal? Because you're clearly, you're doing, you're doing really, really well, which is, yeah, I think, I, well, <laughs> apart from the obvious one, which is getting the legislation to catch up with the technology, that I can see as a major, major issue in the UK. But then generally, globally, do, have you got new products coming out? Or, or, or yeah. what, what, are the, what are your goals coming up? Yeah, so we, we've um, we we like doing quite a bit of R and D and um, trying to push the boundaries on on um, on what's achievable. So for me, my next mission is really to get that piece we were talking about earlier is to get a really really smart panel that can react to changes in yeah. Uh, yeah. demand. So we and it, it's got to be able to do it through software and do it itself, and we're working quite hard to do yeah. that. We're yeah. very close, and I'm uh, you know that right. that's always right. been. I guess for the last 10 years ago, we know we've got solar, we know we've got batteries, and we know we've got yeah. um, variable um, uh, loads on the grid. But how, how do we just pull that together yeah. Um, yeah. into a heater that, that becomes smart enough to be able to, um, to deal with that? Um, yeah. And yeah. You know, that's good because it helps to balance the load in, in terms of the grid, and it's good for people because it will minimize their spend, and that's really important. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that's my next kind of mission on the um, kind of, I guess, it's not just domestic because it links in with the all of the heating. As Matt was saying, you know, you, even on warehouses and stuff, it, it has to yeah. link in that way. Yeah. And it's been something, I guess, the only mismatch is, you've, you, you know, everyone said, well, you've got more sun in the summer when you don't need the heating. But if you look on a global view, um, yeah. that's not the yeah. case. It still works in the UK quite well. But... Um, yeah. You know, there's heating requirements in many many countries and one you're sat in it's a prime one um yeah you know it yeah. gets cold in sydney um yeah. and they need heat yeah. and, and, and traditionally yeah. they've worn yeah. looks and all this stuff and um kind of walk around with hats um but um <laughs> because it's only for two months or something but yeah um, yeah. yeah uh but they've got lots of sunshine at the same time and so uh and, and all the mediterranean countries you know that it's similar so um yeah. Yeah. so i see I see massive potential for combining um, those smart panels with with the solar. But I say even outside of the self generation, I think it's how it works with um, the supply from the grid and and this variability we get in terms of you know a windy night and sometimes it's not you know it's um, and the pricing on that we yeah really yeah. quirky customer uh, I, I think it's fantastic um, used our panels the other day and wrote to us saying I'm pretty sure I, I'm being my, I'm running my heat. I'm being paid to run my heating right now because <laughs> he's on the <laughs> octopus yeah, agile. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and they're asking him to use energy. So he's been paid to heat his house. And he just thought that was absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah. And he's yeah. quite convinced that if he gets it right over the course of a year, he's going to have no bills, you know. And, um, wow. and that's, that's yeah. a really good thing yeah. to get hold and say, wow, if we can deliver anything close to that, um, yes. how amazing yeah. is that? Yeah, no, yeah. Absolutely. 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 Guys, it's been yeah. really good to hear what you're up to and to catch up with you. And uh, and I just, I'm, you know, it's really impressive stuff. I've been so pleased with my heaters. They, don't, you know, they. Yeah. I, I know I started out saying they're weird, 
but I think it's just because I'm, you know, it's just that thing where I'm used to, you know, you used to walk into the office and you hit, hit my wall of heat as I was. And I go, oh, it's warm. So I've had the heating on for three hours, burning gas. And then I go in now and I've had the radiator on for maybe half an hour, your the Herschel radiator. And then I sit down at the thing and I'm going, oh, I'm not cold. <laughs> and then I have to sort of think that because I'm not cold. I'm sitting in the office. I'm typing away, I'm on the phone, all those things, and I'm not cold at all. But the air, you're right, the air doesn't feel like hot air. It, you just, you're just warm. And that's because yeah. the desk is warm, I'm warm, the chair is warm, I'm in. You know, it, does, it is amazing stuff. It's, it's, it's not clever. It's really normal. I've got to adjust my thinking well, along yeah, with the cool. government. Yeah. <laughs> along with the government and their legislation. <laughs> that's why they won't change it, because it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're going to only they'll only listen to the beginning of this podcast. Like, oh, it's, they're right. It's weird. We won't change. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said weird. <laughs> Great stuff, guys. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been really, really interesting, and all power to you. Really good. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Up early. Was, yeah. Uh, good to see you. Yeah. And have a nice well, day. <laughs> thank you. I will do. Thank you. Please support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us to tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. I learned some stuff. What is useful about my brain, that information goes in, but then it comes out quite quickly. And so it's really good to have a refresher because a lot of the things they told me I had learnt before, but of course they'd just gone. Uh, I've got limited data storage, I think that, but in some ways that's a benefit because that means that I ask the relevant questions, one hopes. That's the theory. Whether that's actually true is up to you <laughs> to decide. Um, please do tell your friends about the Fully Charged Show podcast and, of course, the Fully Charged Show and, of course, the Everything Electric Show. And uh, please do tell them about the live events. If you've been to them, you'll know what they like and do tell people to, to come along because they're the one we just had in Sydney a couple of weeks ago was, it was just amazing. And the amount of feedback, the positive feedback we've had has been absolutely extraordinary. So it is worth uh, uh, checking out. And uh, yeah, and tell your, your buddies to subscribe and spread the word. That always helps. Uh, that's it. As always, if you have been, thank you for listening.